America, the Caribbean, and the Southeast Asian countries. I'm very pleased to be in Kuala Lumpur, this is my third time, to take part in this important meeting, focused on trade facilitation, investment promotion, market access, innovation, and sustainable development. And to be able to talk to you today about trade and investment opportunities in Peru, which I hope will get you interest to do business and visit our country. Next, please. I will start by saying that Peru is a small and open to the world economy which has stood out in Latin America <coughs> for solid macroeconomic fundamentals. Peru has grown 4.2% of average over the last two decades, nearly twice the Latin average, as you can see in the graphics. Despite the international situation in Peru, the inflation remains stable according with the Peruvian Central Bank target inflation range between 2% and 4%, 3% in the last 10 years as an average. Peru has shown significant uh, dynamism and has achieved the improvement of the social conditions of this population. We did a register uh, almost 30% of reduction of poverty during the first part of the 2000 years. Uh, in the last two decades, our country has reported one of the highest average growth rates in the region and one of the lowest inflation rates. It is important to mention that exports are one of the main drivers of our economic growth has contributed significantly to the creation of quality jobs and also sustainable, inclusive, and decentralized development. I have to note that most of our products for export are coming from our regions. Thanks to a long-term trade policy based on the principles of openness and trade integration, Peruvian trade has grown significantly over the last two decades, from 14 billion in 2000 to 113 uh, billion in 2023. Peruvian exports also increased from around 7 billion in 2000 to more than 64 billion in 2023, a record figure, while imports increased from 7 billion to 49 billion. In 2023, <coughs> Peruvian exports of goods achieved again and for the third consecutive year an all time record, reaching 64,355 million, a value of 1.1% higher than that reported in 2022. On the other hand, imports fell by 10.8%. Thus, foreign trading goods fell 4.4 in 2024 compared to previous years due to international circumstances as war, recession, among others, that we all face in our countries. Climate disasters and social problems also were faced by Peru during the first semesters of the year that initially think us, make us think that we will be in red to the end of the year, but finally, no, we still continue increasing. Next, please. In recent years, Peru has positioned itself as one of the main global suppliers of half of high quality food products. The next. Especially in the agricultural and fishery sectors. In agriculture in 2023, Peru stood out as the world's first exporter of grapes, asparagus, fresh and canned, quinoa, and blueberries. I would like to note, to make a, a particular comment about uh, blueberry because we call this as a miracle in our country because no more than 10 years ago we had never seen a seed of blueberry in Peru. Now we are leading the world uh, exports in this product. We are also the second exporter of avocado, ginger and Brazil nuts after Mexico, China and Bolivia respectively. It also stands out that the world third exporter of can palm herds. Uh, likewise, we are the fourth global exporter of fresh mangoes and cocoa beans. In fact, cocoa beans is our main product for export to Malaysia. We are the fifth global exporter of unroasted non decaffeinated coffee, six for garlic, seven for tangerines and fresh onions, and eight for canned olives. In fisheries 2023, Peru stood out as the world's leading fish meal exporter. We are also the second largest squid exporter of the China. Likewise, we are the world's fifth lar largest fish oil and seaweed 
exporters. I have to say that that climate issues that uh, are affecting most of us uh, determine that we uh, reduce our export zone fish, fish, fish last year. The next, thank you. These results have been possible due to the fact that Peru has a wide network of free trade agreements. Currently, we have 22 free trade agreements in force with 58 countries, which represent 82% of the world's GDP and more than 3.2 billion potential consumers that represents 42% of the world's population. In these moments, we uh, restart our negotiations with India. We are starting negotiations with Indonesia in May. And also during the last uh, ministerial meeting uh, in Abu Dhabi, uh, we also get a deal to start a negotiations process with uh, Morocco and also with uh, the Arabian Republic. The six partners with the highest participation include economic powers such as China, the US, the European <laughs> Union, as well as Canada, India, and South Korea. It is also worth noting that 91% of our exports of goods are sent to partners with whom we have trade agreements compared to only 8% in 2006. Uh, we are also involved in the uh, optimization of our free trade agreement with China. Uh, that's a, an agreement that has uh, more than 10 years into force. So we found some aspects that we consider should be improved. So we are still doing this work. And also the same situation we are facing uh, with Brazil, one of our main partners in Latin America. Next. As of 2018, Asia has become our main trading partner, surpassing the Americas. In 2023, it represented 45% of total Peruvian trade compared to 19 in 2001. China is currently Peru's main trading partner. In 2023, trade uh, with China reached 35.8 billion. I'm not going to go into the detail of the numbers because there are many, as I can see here, but you can see all of them in the graphics. Regarding the trade with the United States, which uh, uh, 19.4 billion, consolidating its position as Peru's second largest trading partner. And uh, regarding the European Union, is Peru third trading partner with 11 billion. I have to say that the composition of these exports to each of these uh, countries and group of countries are quite different. In the case of China, our main exports are minerals. In the case of US, quite different, and more agricultural products, as well in the case of uh, the European uh, Union. Next, please. Taking a closer view to Asia, trade between Peru and the Southeast Asia has shown a growing trend over time. In 2023, it reached 2.6 billion, where Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia, and Malaysia together explain 86% of the total trade with the region. Peruvian exports to the Southeast reached 674 million, which represents an increase of 32.5%, of which 59 correspond to mining energy exports. No mining and energy exports, including agricultural and fishery products, is playing for the 41 of to, uh, percent of total export to Southeast, uh, Southeast Asia, totaling 275 million in 2023. Malaysia is the main destination market for export with a region with 36 percent of the total. That uh, explains, uh, that's one of the reasons that one I'm joining this uh, meeting uh, during these days. The next one? Oh, we are very good. No, the one before this. Yes. Exactly. In 2023, uh, between Peru and Malaysia, trade between Peru and Malaysia reached a record height of 456 million with a growth of 26.7%. Thanks to the growth of exports that represent an increase of 80, almost 90%, imports on the other hand fell by 8.5. Peruvian exports to Malaysia were record in 2023, reaching 245 million, of which 
69% corresponded to mining and energy exports, mainly copper and zinc. No mining energy exports also increased in 155%, totaling 76 million, thanks to increase in cocoa being exported as I already mentioned. On the other hand, Peru imported more than 200 million from Malaysia. Main, import, main import products include Ganoderma extract, urea, processors, and palm oil. Giving a closer view, in two decades, Peruvian exports to Malaysia increased from 22 million to around 245 million. That's an important increase. In 2000, Peru exported to Malaysia mainly minerals, metallurgy, fishery products, and agricultural products, having, having uh, I have to say that almost 80% was minerals. Now, in 2023, it can be seen that mineral export represented 69 of total exports to Malaysia, followed by other <coughs> exports, which represent 29%, mainly cocoa beans. It's the start for now. It should be noted that Malaysia is our first largest destination for cocoa beans. Next. Uh, Peru and Malaysia are both members of the CPTPP, that was already mentioned by uh, the representatives of the Malaysian government before. Uh, this agreement is one of the most ambitious trade agreements in the world. I have to say I was part of the negotiators team. I was the leading the intellectual property team, and uh, I have to say that we, or the, fact, the countries that are members of this agreement, should take more advantage of this uh, deal because it costs us so much to get into, that, <coughs> into a consensus to the end of the negotiation process. Thanks to this agreement, Peru and Malaysia have preferential access to each other markets since November 2022 for more than 85% uh, of products. In the case of Peru, 94, and in the case of Malaysia, 85%. In 2023, both countries will have eliminated their duties for almost 100% of their tariff lines. That's very important. And 2020, 20, 2033, it's close. From now. CPTPP as a multi-party agreement provides the possibility of origin accumulation. I would like to note this because this allows CPTPP countries to use supplies of other parties while maintaining the CPTPP origin and access to the markets with preferential tariffs. Therefore, this agreement creates opportunities for Peruvian and Malaysian companies to start possible alliance and to promote the creation of C CPTPP of regional values of change. I have to say that yesterday I had a very uh, interesting conversation with Vice Minister Liu and we found additional points of common interest to increase our trade relationship. I just have five more minutes just to mention, next, next slide please, what are the opportunities for trading? between our countries, this, um, <coughs> this PowerPoint is going to be shared with, uh, uh, with all of you later, then you will come and find more of this information on these products, but these are some of the products that we are ready to export to Malaysia. I have to say that uh, I'm very, very happy to announce that this year, phytosanitary access was granted by Malaysia to Peru for avocados and pomegranates, and we are also, also expecting to include mangoes hopefully this year. And there is a main interest from the Malaysian market for uh, quinoa because they appreciate also um, the color and also the larger beans of uh, the quinoa that Peru offers. The next one. Going into investment, Peru is a good place. Yeah, the previous one. Peru is a good place to do business and invest in. Thanks to its solid macroeconomic fundamentals and resilient private sector, Peru is one of the fastest growing countries in the region, with an average channel growth rate of 0.46 in the period of 2002 and 2022. Responsible fiscal and monetary policies allow us to have a favorable and lower risk environment for foreign investments. 
<coughs> In addition, Peru is a highly competitive country and it's open to foreign investments. I have to mention that our constitution established non-discriminatory treatment between uh, investors from wherever they come. And also that these uh, 22 agreements that I already mentioned, in most of the cases include provisions regarding uh, invest investments. In that sense, <coughs> we have laws that protect investment and incentives to encourage it. Uh, it, it has a strategic location also Peru in the center of South America as a gateway to Asia Pacific. Peru has a network of eight ports, terminals, and five international airports to facilitate the flow of goods and people. Tomorrow, I'm going to participate in the panel of connectivity. I'm going to give you more detail regarding what is Peru doing in these moments to, uh, establish, to establish as a hub in Latin America to Asia. Next, next one. According to information from FDI markets, Malaysia has invested approximately 40, uh, 46 point million in Peru. The investments took place in the year 2021 and recently, and recently in 2023. The next one. Just to finish, uh, I would like to, to share with us that we are very happy as Peru, as part of the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation, uh, are going to host APEC meetings this year for the third time. Under this, it holds year, yes, year, Peru has proposed that team empower, include, grow, and as priorities, trade and investment for inclusive and interconnected growth, innovation and digitalization to promote transition to the formal and global economy, because informality is a key problem for most of the countries of the economies of APEC, sustainable growth for Brazilian development. Through discussions on activities planned for, to try for this year, we expect to deepen these priorities and explore opportunities to move towards more inclusive and sustainable development in the region. Just to close my presentation, I, I will ask you to allow me to present you a video, a short video of our hosting of it. Somos el nevado que se convierte en vida. Somos el río que recorre la selva eterna. Mega diversa, infinita. Somos el mar que nos regala sus secretos. Somos milenios y milenios de historia. Somos tradición que perdura. Somos la chispa, la creatividad que nunca se apaga. Somos las manos que crean, transforman y construyen. Somos la fuerza que emprende, que sale adelante, siempre. Somos el plato amable servido en la mesa. Somos la melodía irresistible que te invita a bailar. Somos la cálida sonrisa que te da la bienvenida. Somos sol, somos tierra, somos mar. Y este año somos APEC Perú 2024. El punto de encuentro para reimaginar el comercio en la región Asia-Pacífico, donde sumamos esfuerzos para tener un comercio más libre, accesible e inclusivo. Este es el momento decisivo para adoptar un crecimiento sostenible, el momento de consolidar el tránsito a energías limpias y a una economía circular, el momento de afinar la ruta de nuestra seguridad alimentaria, el punto de quiebre para transitar a una economía global formal e inclusiva, donde la transformación digital reduce brechas, donde la inclusión financiera empodera a las mujeres, donde las herramientas innovadoras impulsan el desarrollo del turismo. Durante este 2024 tendremos oportunidades para dialogar y reflexionar sobre el presente y futuro para la prosperidad de nuestras poblaciones y así tomar decisiones que beneficien a emprendedores, a las pequeñas y medianas empresas, a nuestros ciudadanos. Anin Hamuku y Kaichun, Kametsa Pimpok, Walip Hutaptaja. Bienvenidos a Perú. Bienvenidos a la oportunidad de trabajar juntos por una región Asia-Pacífico próspera y sostenible.
from Apex Brazil Beijing office. So thank you very much for having me today. Uh, it, it's my honor to be here as one part of Brazilian delegation. And uh, thank you very much for Mr. Marcos for inviting me as one speaker uh, in this sem seminar. Uh, I believe that today marks the beginning uh, of strenuous relationships and cooperations across various uh, sectors. So, uh, next page, please. So, allow me to provide some insights about Brazil. Uh, Brazil has the largest economy, largest population, and the largest territory in Latin America. The country ranks as fifth largest country globally by territory extension. Uh, Brazil has abundant resources. <coughs> the country ranks as 10th largest oil producer and fourth agricultural producer in the world. Brazil is also one of the biggest consuming markets in the world. Brazil plays a very significant role in sustainability. The 7% of the world renewable energy comes from Brazil. Next, please. So in 2023, uh, Brazil sets a new record regarding to uh, trade. So uh, in 2023, uh, Brazil exported $339.7 billion and imported uh, $240.8 billion with a surplus of $98.8 billion, which was much higher than the year of 2022. Brazil had record-breaking exports to China, Indonesia, Mexico, Vietnam. Additionally, the Brazil had received $86 billion investment in 2022, the country became the fifth largest destination of foreign investment in the world, behind only the United States, China, Singapore, Hong Kong, and the head of the countries such as Australia, uh, Canada, and France. Next, please. Here I want to underline some specific sectors in Brazil. Uh, Agribusiness is one of the most important industries of Brazil which occupies 24.8% of GDP. It is estimated that Brazil uh, agriculture will make 40% contribution to global food production by 2025 and will have 266% increase in production of the main agricultural crops in the next 40 years. Brazil has high capacity in transportation. The country has 1.7 million kilometers of highways. And the country uh, had 1.8 million tons of cargo transported uh, from Paul's in 2022. And uh, also had 500 million useful tons transported by railways. <coughs> Brazil is also very active in renewable energy. 7% uh, of all energy uh, production in the world comes from uh, Brazil. The country ranks at thirds in the world in share of renewable energy. And 80% uh, of the country energy generation capacity comes from renewable energy. Uh, so here I want to highlight that uh, Brazil is also the largest innovation hub in Latin America. The country <coughs> has more than uh, 22,000 startups, over 220 funds managers, and over 30 unicorns. Next, please. So looking forward to uh, Brazil engagements with uh, ASEAN countries. Uh, during the past 20 years, the trade between uh, Brazil and ASEAN uh, has had a consistent growth, especially between uh, 2019 and 2023. Brazil export to ASEAN had a very rich growth of 19.8%, which was higher than the average annual growth of the total value exported by Brazil in the same period. 
So these numbers could uh, differentiate that uh, ASEAN countries have been gained strategy veterans in Brazilian foreign trade. Next, please. So here I want to highlight some points. Uh, ASEAN countries are the third main destination for Brazilian exports in 2023, uh, behind only China and the United States, and the height of Mercosur. Uh, Brazilian exports to ASEAN countries are concentrated in commodities, and we have some special, specific products that made a significant growth, uh, such as sugar, uh, soybean, meat, and so on. And the ASEAN countries uh, is also the sixth largest origin uh, of Brazilian imports in 2023. Uh, next, please. Uh, I will go to the more details. So looking at this map, uh, Singapore is the first destination for Brazilian exports which occupies 30.4% of total value. Uh, Malaysia is the second one, which occupies 16.9%. Uh, 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 Indonesia is the third one, uh, which occupies 16.8% of total value. Uh, Pejori, soy bean, arrow uh, sugar and meat are the main products that Brazil exports to these countries. <coughs> Regarding to the uh, import to Brazil, uh, Vietnam is the first supplier of Brazilian imports, which occupies 32.5%. And Thailand is the second one, with 21.3%. And Malaysia is the third one, which uh, occupies 15.8% of total value. And electronic components, telecommunication equipment, and uh, automotive parts are the main products that Brazil imports from these countries. In terms of the uh, uh, trade between Brazil and Malaysia, actually Brazil has good result in exporting to Malaysia. Uh, Brazil is the largest sugar supplier uh, in Malaysia with 44.6% uh, of market share and the second supplier of uh, green coffee with 21.6% of market share. Next, please. So in terms of investment, uh, the foreign direct investment of Asian countries in Brazil uh, reached $12.2 billion in 2021. Uh, and during the past 10 years, uh, Asian countries uh, has announced 17 green investment projects in Brazil and 20 announcements regarding MMA projects. And from uh, the year of 2000 to 2023, uh, ASEAN countries uh, has announced uh, six projects in infrastructure in Brazil. So here I want to highlight Singapore has the largest investment in Brazil with 10.9 billion dollars, which occupies 88.9% of the total uh, value of investment of Asian in Brazil. Uh, next, please. Uh, next, please. Uh, so, uh, taking several minutes, I would like to uh, introduce a little bit about our agency. Uh, Apex Brazil is an official Brazilian trade and investment promotion agency. We do for supporting Brazilian companies for uh, uh, international expansion. Uh, we do for attracting foreign investment into Brazilian industries. And uh, we also uh, promote Brazilian export to global markets. Uh, we have partnership with more than 50 industry associations in Brazil. And we work very closely with Brazilian embassies and consulates around the world. <coughs> next, please. Uh, next, please. So uh, we have 15 offices in Brazil and abroad. Uh, in Asia, we have two offices in China, one in Beijing and the other one is in Shanghai. 
Uh, these two offices in China, we work for the whole Asian and Pacific re region. And we are also planning to set up a new office in Singapore in this uh, second semester. And this office in Singapore will cover all the activities in all Asian countries. Next, please. So depending on each need, we run the full range of solutions for the company, including uh, marketing intelligence, qualification for international uh, business, we organize business promotion uh, events, we support uh, companies for international expansion, uh, we support invest uh, foreign investors to uh, seek opportunities in Brazil, and we also do image promotion for Brazil and Brazil products. Next. Uh, here I would like to share uh, some results that we reached uh, last year. Uh, our agency in 2023, we supported uh, 17,064 companies, which reached $170 million uh, in exports, and uh, these companies occupy 41.4% participation in Brazilian trade balance. Uh, we uh, executed 50 sectoral projects with Brazilian uh, industrial associations, and we supported uh, 47 uh, Brazilian companies' uh, new operation abroad. So in terms of the investment, uh, the investment announcement we supported in last year could reach $10.2 billion and uh, uh, renegade uh, over 106,000 jobs in Brazil. Next, please. Uh, in the end, I would like to share some uh, specific uh, projects that our agency is in partnership with Brazilian industries associations in Asian countries. Uh, we will focus on several sectors like uh, food and beverage, agriculture, national and equipment, fashion, health, and uh, other sectors. So we are looking forward to support more institutions and corporations in both Asian and uh, Brazilian markets. So uh, if you uh, have any repair or any information about Brazil, please uh, feel free to contact us. So this is all my part. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me today. Um, just bear with me a little bit more. The coffee is coming. So just two presentations more, right? So hi, I'm Natalia Arcos. I'm the International Director of Protili. As we said, um, we are the Export Promotion Agency of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, this year, we are very happy because we celebrate 50 years uh, working with you and the, the world. And uh, you probably know Ana Belen Bueno is our trade commissioner here. You can say hi to the people here. Um, she works here and if you need something about business and Chile, she is the person and she has been working with us the last of the, uh, I mean the half of the years that we are celebrating. So thank you, Ana. And thank you also the ambassador, Jaime, and your team uh, for your support to having me here today. So first, I would, like, I would like to ask you something. When you think in Chile, right, what is the first concept that you think about us? I mean, the, the first word, it doesn't matter what. Good wine. Wine, very good, a good wine. What else? Avocado. Avocado, thank you, thank you for that. <laughs> um, what else? Copper, right? Lithium, probably, or green hydrogen. Um, we have a lot of things that we can show you. And today I would like to show you a little bit more about Chile and in order to, to learn what we have. And for me, the most important thing that I would like to message to you is we are a reliable partner. We have been working 50 years on international trade. So we are here to work with you and to grow together. So, next, please. <clears throat> um, as you may know, we are um, a diverse and democratic uh, republic. We have more than 4,000 kilometers long with seven different climates. So, if you would like to, to enjoy different climates at the same time, we have seven <coughs> in our country. Uh, we are in a presence on three continents and we have a population 
almost 20 million people. So we are seeking, and this is our dream, to create a, a better future together. And we know we are a, a little um, country, so we know that if we want to grow, we need you to work with us. So yeah, that's the invitation that we have today. So the next, the next one, please. So why Chile? Why connect with us if we are very far, far away? I arrived yesterday, it was two days traveling here, but it was a very good experience. Um, because we are connected and committed to the global economy. As you may know, we are one of the most open uh, countries in the world. Um, in the region, we have the most competitive uh, economy right now. Um, we were the first uh, South American economy to join the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Um, if you are thinking to doing business with us, probably we are one of the most easy country to work uh, in South America. We are open, transparent and dynamic business environment. And also we have a stable economy and democracy um, that make Chile an attractive and reliable destination for investing and doing business uh, with us. The next, please. So, as I say, why Chile? We have 33 trade agreements, um, same as Peru. We are part of the CPTPP, also like Malaysia. So, we have a lot of things to do together in order to promote and to grow <laughs> in our relationship. Um, but with, with us, you don't just have access to our population that is almost 20 million. But also you can reach the, 60, the 650 uh, million inhabitants in Latin America and Caribbean. Um, and with our trade agreements, you can, you can, okay, thank you. You can uh, reach the 88% of the world's GDP. So the, the invitation is clear. We have an open country to receive not just uh, investment or, or trade, but also your visit because it's a very uh, beautiful country that you can reach a lot of things of us. So, the next one, please. And we are very proud that probably being a very little country, we have more than 26 products that are leading the, uh, we are the, the, the best, the first supplier of 26 <coughs> products. As you can see, for example, in the first place, we have lithium, fresh cherries, um, probably if you, if you were in China, you can try a, a very good fresh cherries that are from Chile. Um, but also in total, in the first uh, three uh, position, we have 80, I'm sorry, 58 products in the first uh, three positions. So we have a lot of uh, things to show you that we can provide from Chile. But also it's not just goods, we also have services. And here we have a very uh, good uh, tip that during 2023, export of services grew by 76% and we reached 131 markets with our <coughs> services. But not the typical services, we grew up by industry, uh, I'm sorry, the creative industries, so such as publishing or audio, audiovisual. That, is, that, that are things that are creating from Chile. Um, just not, not about uh, goods, but also with services, with great value added. Thank you. So in particular, what is the, the key that we are working together today? Is we connect your necessities with all the countries, you know, with the Trade Association, Ministry of Agriculture, Invest Chile that are promoting investment, Corfo with a lot of um, projects that are financing today to grow in, in our country, Cernatur who is in charge of tourism, um, Conadi who is uh, working with indigenous people to grow even internationally too. So if you work with us, with Anna, with <coughs> our ambassador and his team, you can reach not just trade, but also all the things that we have in Chile for you. So just uh, that is the message. Thank you for listening to us. And today we can keep uh, talking about our country and why Chile is a very good and reliable uh, partner to work with. Thank you.
So I will go straight to that video and then I'll talk with you about some uh, different uh, characteristics of Uruguay in the region. Made in Uruguay innovates, surprises and advances. We're the second largest producer of clean energy in the world, and we believe that the future of energy is in electric mobility and green hydrogen. That's why we developed H2U. By becoming a leader in renewable energies, we'll achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. We were the first in the world to give every child in school their own laptop. We are third in the world in per capita software exportation. We are leaders in e-government in the region and have integrated the D9. We have the largest fiber optic and telephone coverage in the region. We are advancing in 5G and in sustainable production, as well as low emission technologies in order to develop the circular economy and industry 4.0. Our entrepreneurial system in information technology is more than 30 years old. Today, large companies such as Mercado Libre, Globant, BASF, or Nestle have chosen us to set up their factories. Volkswagen chose Uruguay to launch its electric car in Latin America, while the Uruguayan unicorn, D-Local, is breaking records on Wall Street. We develop and test the most popular video games on the planet. We produce orbiting satellites and sophisticated medical devices. We organized the first Robotics World Cup, and we made it to the podium. We produce a great deal of scientific knowledge. We put our brains to work. For 30 years, Uruguay has been planting millions of trees to develop a sustainable forest industry in harmony with the environment and to protect our biodiversity. We complement this with our work in livestock production, capturing greenhouse gases. Meanwhile, our native forests are growing year after year because we're nature friendly. We have evolved Made in Nature to produce the best meat in the world. We were pioneers in deploying a traceability system that allows us to identify and follow each one of our 12 million cattle, which are the fruit of a unique genetic line with 400 years of history. We bring quality food to the world, such as meat, fish, soy, malt, rice, citrus, wheat, dairy, and multi-award winning wines. We are so disruptive that we are selling caviar to Russia, coffee to Colombia, olive oil to Spain, and genetically modified mice to Japan. We breed movie horses, produce high-end car leathers and wool, and textiles that end up on the cover of Vogue, being worn by Greta or in the windows of Chanel, Cole, or Stella McCartney. Our creativity allows us to export design in fashion, architecture, graphics and jewelry, our talent and landscapes are reflected in series and films that we produce for Amazon, Netflix, Disney, HBO, and Sony. One of the Rolling Stones gave his daughters a Uruguayan lube guitar to learn. Made in Uruguay leaves you electric. We have spirit and a way of thinking. We are determined. It's our time. It's Uruguay's time. A country with a human scale. Creative, hardworking, serious, relaxed that breathes freedom at every turn and conquers the world with each quality product that we produce. Unusual. Free. Test Uruguay. So, you see why I wanted the video to speak on, on behalf of Uruguay, because I think this, this is a, a great opportunity that you have today and tomorrow um, to understand that Latin America and the Caribbean uh, are a, a land of opportunities. And although it may seem to you that we are competing with each other to see which one is the most beautiful one uh, when presented the opportunities that you have in each of our countries, the reality is that we can cover everything from science to agriculture to commodities. Uh, we have everything to offer. Uh, if we are talking about trade opportunities, if we are talking about investment opportunities, when you start learning more about our countries uh, and our region, you would find that you can uh, find great partners for everything that you're thinking about uh, doing in the future. But let me just go into some details about Uruguay that may be of interest to you, and maybe I'll ask for the next one, or the next one. Uh, one of the characteristics of Uruguay 
I don't know if you may know something except for football, and I hope that you know a, a little bit about football in Uruguay, and Uruguay, Argentinian football. Um, but we have uh, only three million and a half inhabitants, but we produce food for 30 million people. And we are thinking that in a couple of years we will be able to produce food for 50 million people. So imagine that. We are a country that produces, eats, but we need to export, we need to, we need to sell what we are producing, otherwise we don't know what to do with that food. And that's why uh, exports for us become so important. With us, such a small market, we need to think about the world. And trade, uh, uh, for us, has been uh, a development uh, tool since the beginning and since uh, we are a country. We are uh, not only uh, exporters of uh, food, we are also number one software exporter in Latin America. So we are also diversifying into services and not focusing uh, in what traditionally we use to, to export. And Christian tomorrow will probably tell you a lot about innovation and how we are making sure that innovation is in anything and everything that we produce and we export. Next. If you want to know a little bit more, um, we have agribusiness and food as the uh, represent, representing 48% of our, what we export uh, to the world, beef, livestock, dairy and fish being the most important one, but also becoming more and more important for the country, including in the trade with Malaysia, it's pot, wood and paper. Uh, forestry industry was not there when I was a kid and now it's becoming number one exporting item in the country uh, during a couple of the last years. We also export cereals, oil seed, fruits, and other uh, and of, of those characteristics. Rice, for example, is quite important for us. Uh, beverage, you saw the wine reference in the, in the presentation, wood, leather, textile, and it goes on and on and on. Also, uh, trading business and financial and creative research, research and development is becoming more and more important, representing 30% of our exports. Uh, and you see tourism, uh, although pandemic affected tourism all over the world, but we are hoping it will be back on track. Next. Our main destinations, and that's why it's becoming more and more important to have these kind of opportunities to discuss with each other. Almost one third of what we export goes to China. Uh, what does that mean? Of course, China is our uh, main uh, uh, trading partner, but that also means that the route and the idea of being so far away is no longer such an issue. Once you are com commercing with one country in the region, creating uh, uh, the opportunities with the neighboring countries should be, and I'm saying should be, easier uh, in logistic terms. But for that, we need to understand each other, learn about each other, and find the, so the opportunities and the solutions uh, for bringing maybe what we offer to Malaysia or to the rest of the Asian countries and the other way, the, the other way. Uh, except for if, we, if we take China outside of, of, the, of this equation, we have another third of our production and exports that go to the region, mainly Brazil, Argentina, uh, and another third that I would put it into uh, Europe, the US, Canada, Mexico, uh, all together. Next. Some of the things that uh, we try to explain when we're trying to attract investors or trade opportunities is that Uruguay is number one in the democracy index. These are using 2023 numbers. We are also number one in the low corruption uh, and transparency international index. We are number one in freedom house civil of liberties in 2023. We are number one in rule of law indexed uh, by the World Justice Project. We are number one on social mobility in World's Economic Forum, and I'm using 2020 achieving there. And I'm also going to say that we are number one in e-government development uh, index uh, from the United Nations. So you have some characteristics there that put our country uh, maybe in the uh, top positions uh, between many others. Next. 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 Uh, forefront of uh, sustainability. For me, it's important for you to know that 94% of our energy is renewable. Uh, this means that, you see the percentages there, but this means that we are, uh, uh, of course, one of the most uh, um, uh, developed uh, countries in terms of the use of energy uh, from the renewable sources. We export that part of the, of the uh, energy, and we also have nutty forest growing, so we don't have a problem that you know, normally comes with uh, those of us that work in forestry and export forestry products. Next. Next. 
Next. I'm trying to save some of the time. You would see there uh, that we also are uh, named by, by Mercer in 2023 as the best quality of life in Latin America. Next. Next. And this is where I want to give you just a, a, an explanation of why we uh, are And I'm going into investment more than into trade opportunities in this case. We have something that is very particular to us and uh, that we try to publicize a lot, and it's free zones. What's the meaning of these free zones? Okay, for 35 years, this means eight governments, from right to left to left to right, governments change, and this regime still is there in the country to allow the attraction of investment in a country that, as I said from the beginning, we're talking about a very small population in a small territory in comparison to our big neighbors. But what we offer is 100% exemption for corporate income tax, equity tax, import taxes, any other present or future taxation, invoice in any currency, 10% flat, personal income uh, for expats, and of course, uh, this is a different situation if you're hiring local people. This regime in particular has allowed Uruguay to capture the attention of many investors in the world, and I'm looking forward maybe to having more from the Asian country in the future. Next. Another characteristic that puts us uh, in a different situation maybe is that we have three ports and airports. Uh, the Carrasco International Airport, our main airport in the capital city, Montevideo, is the only free airport in South America. And our ports are uh, the only free ports in the Atlantic coast of South America. Next. And that for you, just to conclude, a little bit of a summary of what we export when we're talking about uh, investment. So I'm looking forward to talking with uh, any of you that may be interested uh, in Uruguay, in investing or trading with Uruguay. And uh, of course, um, we are looking forward uh, for tomorrow's conversation also with Christian. So you would see uh, a site that is not the most traditional about the country, that is not only cows and food. Thank you very much. Hola, somos Argentina, y si hay algo que nos define, es la diversidad. En nuestros casi 3 millones de kilómetros cuadrados, es posible encontrar todos los climas e increíbles paisajes. Algunos declarados por UNESCO como Patrimonio de la Humanidad. A la diversidad de la naturaleza, sumamos la de nuestra gente. Entre 1880 y 1950, recibimos 5 millones de inmigrantes de casi toda Europa y buena parte de Asia. Todos ellos nos enseñaron el valor del esfuerzo y la cultura del trabajo, pero también sus modos de disfrutar la vida y celebrarla. Así que no importa de dónde seas, seguro tenés a alguien cercano en la Argentina. Somos un país sin conflictos bélicos, raciales, religiosos o fronterizos. Y aprendimos a convivir en paz como una sola nación. En Argentina hay también un poquito de Colombia, Chile, Perú, Bolivia y Paraguay. Si discutimos con Uruguay y con Brasil, es solo por fútbol. En nuestro suelo producimos alimentos para 400 millones de personas. Pero también exportamos software, reactores nucleares, helicópteros, biotecnología y videojuegos. Como todos los jóvenes cometimos algunos errores, pero hemos aprendido mucho. Tenemos dos premios Nobel de la Paz y un peregrino de la Concordia. Tenemos algunos campeones. Pero hay una sola pasión que nos vuelve locos. Tenemos cuatro unicornios tecnológicos, tres premios Nobel en ciencia, dos premios Oscar y un extraterrestre. 
tanta diversidad nos hace creativos, inquietos y emprendedores. Y nos gusta compartir esos logros con el mundo. Somos amistosos, sociables y extrovertidos. Y en nuestro asado siempre hay lugar para un invitado más. Somos Argentina. Somos la diversidad. Fuimos. Somos. Y seguiremos siendo una nación abierta. I promise you, I'm not going to speak about soccer today. Uh, I'm going to try to be, or to speak more in detail about what you just saw. So the first slide, please. Well, Argentina the glass. Argentina has a large and diversified economy. We are 47 million of inhabitants. We are the eighth largest country in the world, as you see, with 3 million of square meters, which means that half of the, of the land we have in Argentina is cultivable. And this indicates that Argentina, as I mentioned yesterday, will play a key role in the future in food security. And it's something that we are taking very seriously. It's the third largest GDP after, in ATAM, after Brazil and Mexico. It's a member of Mercosur, as you may know, is the southern uh, common market, the WTO, G20 members. And currently, we are in process of accession to the OECD, the Organization for the Economic Cooperation and Development. As many other countries, next one, please. The previous one. No, the previous As many other countries in Latin America, Argentina is richness of natural resources. It's a top global exporter of agricultural products, and I can mention some of them. Soybean and its derivatives, biodiesel, lemon, peanuts, corn, beef, and wheat, among others. And Argentina, as Chile, uh, we share uh, the mountains, and so that means that we have a lot of potential for height for many areas. It's the second in the south of the country, also in the, has the second largest shale gas and the fourth largest shale oil reservoirs in the world. We call, the, we call it the basin, dead cow, vaca muerta. It's very important. And as I want to speak a little bit uh, later, uh, Petronas and YPF, the Argentine company, has a strategic partnership over there. Argentina also is the, large, the fourth largest lithium producer in the world, and it's a hot product for now, for, for, for us now. And also has vast offshore potential. And it's a very, and it also has very important ports, nodes in the Atlantic Ocean. And last, also very important for us, Argentina uh, has high quality of human capital, in particular in the service area. And this attracts a lot of international companies. For example, uh, JP Morgan, one of the largest US banks in the world, has a huge service area in Buenos Aires, among many other companies uh, from Europe and from other, other countries. Next one. Key productive sectors that offer opportunities in both common and investment. As I mentioned before, agricultural is one of the most important for us because we have plenty of food and beverage, animal protein, forestry, pulp, and aquaculture. We produce food for more people than we have. Um, we are entering in a strategic partnership with different countries to provide those products, for, in particular those who need to import more than what they have to consume. Energy mining as, is another important sector. Argentina has a world-class hydrocarbon resources that position itself as an important player in the global energy market. Just to mention something, Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile have the 65% of the lithium resources in the world. Other, other important resources are gold, plate, copper. But Argentina is not only agricultural and energy and mining, it's also manufacturing powerhouse. Argentina has an 
dynamic industrial complexes, in particular in automotive and auto parts, <coughs> medical equipment, pharma and nuclear reactors, machinery and equipment among others. It's also a technology hub for knowledge services and for other professional services, biotechnology and satellites. As you saw in the video, Argentina is a large country, as I mentioned before, the eighth largest country in the world, and that means tourism is also important. Important. Argentina is natural, has a natural and cultural diversity, so it's very nice to visit. And the last, the last sector that is important for us is real estate. Next one, please. So, until now, I have speak a little bit about all the things and the similarities that Argentina has with other Latin American countries. But what we have now different, in my opinion, is we have a new administration. And I would like to speak a little bit about that. Since last December, uh, the priorities of the new administration has been in, par in particular to reduce the inflation levels, that was a problem for us, and it's still a problem, but it's coming down. Ordering public accounts by reducing the fiscal spending, and in particular improving central, central bank balance sheets. The new administration is also working on a new bill, which is important for you guys, which includes new incentive regime for large national and foreign investments in key sector of the economy, more or less the same I was talking about earlier, with great potential export. Those sectors are agribusiness, forestry, infrastructure, energy, mining, oil and gas, and technology. And the incentives include direct and indirect tax and custom benefits, as well as special foreign exchange regime, legal certainty, and stability. All these packages in the, con in the Grand Congress right now. So now I would like to speak that what are the two areas of complementation between Argentina and Malaysia, after all this introduction. One of the, of the <coughs> sectors I believe we have more potential is agriculture linked to food security. And we were talking about yesterday about the importance of halal and the importance of having educational programs uh, so our companies can address uh, more these, these markets. It's important. As, as my colleague from Uruguay mentioned yesterday, we come from different cultures. So we need to work on spreading information about what halal means, and what halal the opportunities, and how we can complement uh, the bilateral commerce between two countries. The other sector I, I would like to, to highlight today is energy. And in, par in particular, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, liquidified natural gas. Uh, well, in, in these two areas, Argentina has strong fundamentals and capabilities. In agriculture, for example, Argentina has a place called Gran Rosario, that is 300 kilometers from Buenos Aires. And this is a particularly important place because the ports, we have many public and private ports, they are consolidated itself as the second most important port node in the world in volume of grains, flowers and vegetable oils. As you can see, that is why we are so important in food security and in the agricultural sector. Also, Petronas has a strategic alliance with YPF. That is Argentina's largest integrated oil and gas company. That started in 2014. Uh, now, this integration is being extended to further collaboration on LNG, liquid liquidified natural gas. So, with those sectors in potential, I think that we need to do more and better in our bilateral commerce because it's about just 1.8 US billion. It's the second largest after Brazil, but we can do more and better. To summarize, 
I would like to highlight that Argentina, like many other Latin American countries, offer important investment opportunities in these relevant sectors of the economy, such as food, energy, and services, just to mention a few. In this context, the new administration is making effort to stabilize the economy. The subsequent stop will be to offer those incentives that I mentioned are in the Congress, tax, custom, and foreign exchange. That is to facilitate the arrival of large investment. And I would like to also mention that we are also working to get Congress approval to new bilateral investment treaties, in particular with both countries, especially with United Arab Emirates. So we are expecting to receive a lot of investment these years uh, with, with when Congress passed this law. So I invite you to, to learn more, more about us. We have the booth, as uh, was mentioned before, and if, if you don't you cannot stop at the booth. We have also the team of the embassy that remains here in Kuala Lumpur uh, to provide you more information. Thank you very much. These of our Gulag countries, uh, just a quick story. I've only been here for two weeks. No? So uh, it's my first event as a Colombian ambassador. Uh, I'm very proud of representing my country. And of course, uh, all my uh, we're not only friends with our Latin American countries, we're brothers, you know? And this is our whole point of being here today. First, I think we have a short video of Colombia. Like, I have to be on the trend of the videos, how come not, no? So again, another video, I hope it, it, it works. Yes, are we ready? Thank you so much. que tiene Colombia? ¿Cuál es su verdadera belleza? Aquí la gente lo es todo. Porque además de navegar un río que se escapa entre la selva para convertirse en mar, puedes escuchar más de 65 pueblos indígenas intactos. ¿Cómo no va a ser hermoso un país donde puedes probar una fruta distinta los 365 días del año? Gracias a las manos de nuestros campesinos que llevan comida a la mesa de los colombianos y a las mesas de todo el mundo. Estamos orgullosos de nuestras tres cordilleras, pero mucho más de nuestros ciclistas que las conquistan en el alto de montaña más largo del mundo. Aquí el viento suena a progreso. Es el mismo viento que habla con 1,900 especies de aves y les dice a qué árbol deben llegar para ser vistas. De nuestros dos océanos nacen nuestras hermosas islas y de nuestras islas nace la unión de dos personas. Mira nuestras montañas y mira las hectáreas que quedan por cultivar. Y hablando de verde, respira. Respira tranquilo porque somos un pulmón del mundo. Vivimos en medio de una belleza que cambia todos los días. Donde vive el pasado, el presente y el futuro en cada región. Una belleza generosa para el que la quiera ver. El que viene por negocio se queda por placer y el que viene por placer encuentra su negocio. Así que la invitación es esta. Ven por primera vez o vuelve desde donde estés y recorre el país para que sigas descubriendo a Colombia, el país de la belleza. I need to remember something. We've been talking a lot about Malaysia, but I think we have people from other countries here. So, uh, who comes from Indonesia? Do we have somebody from Indonesia? No? Okay, uh, Singapore maybe, Cambodia. I think we have somebody from Cambodia. Beautiful country as well, no? So thank you so very much for coming, also from many other places. 
Uh, of course, uh, the first thing of Colombia is where we are located. You know? So, one of the important things about Colombia, and we pride ourselves to being in a very specific spot in South America. We have ports to both our main oceans, the Caribbean and Atlantic Ocean, and also to the Pacific. So our location is really strategic, you know, for many reasons. We have uh, three ports that are very important on the Caribbean coast and a very big port on our Pacific coast. And that makes the connectivity outside from Colombia very important. Also, the Bogota hub, our airport hub, is growing faster than any other airport in the Americas, with flights that receive almost 17 million people changing flights every year. So that means that there's a very specific hub for connecting with Central and South America, of course with the Caribbean as well. So as many people that are in the, in the commercial business, they say it's everything where you're located, where your commerce is located, and we think we have a very good spot right there in the South American uh, northern edge. Of course our market is also very important. 52 million inhabitants right now, our GDP has been growing at least 3% the last few years now, even though that you know Colombia has been a, a country with many conflicts. You know? And this has something to say about the Colombian personality. Of course, we have very important cities. You know? Some of you have heard about, for example, Medellin or Bogota, which are very important industrial uh, service hubs uh, for software, as most of our fellow countries, we are also into the service business. And this is becoming very important for our economy. Our 18 different uh, free trade agreements also connect Colombia with Central America, Mexico, Peru, Chile. We're part of the Alliance of the Pacific you know, with uh, those fellow countries. And that means a lot to us. It's almost 400 million people together that you can enter via the Pacific Alliance. So for that, for that reason, Colombia has become also a very important place of exchange. Of course, our free trade agreement with the U.S., with Canada, and with Europe has also helped improve our exports and our competitiveness for the region. You know? Of course, we have been bargaining also with some Asian countries. We already have a free trade agreement with Korea and the one that is uh, supposed to be signed in the few coming months with uh, Singapore. As I was telling you, location is everything. You know? In this case, you see our Caribbean coast up there in the, in the blue, in the teal blue, and our Pacific coast. That gives us the connection to all the other regions around the planet. And that is very important for us because the markets that we're connected to are also growing very much. The Caribbean market, the Central American market, and of course our fellow uh, countries of Southern America. Colombia is divided in those regions that you see here. The main three regions of, of or the main regions are Pacific, Caribbean, and what we call the Amazon and Orinoquia region that connects us also to Venezuela. Most of our industrial uh, uh, enterprises and manufacture happen in the main Andes regions that you see here in orange, pink, and red. That's where most of the GDP is being grown in Colombia and where most of the population is set. You know? Our natural areas are mostly in the Pacific and of course on the Amazon region which is as you have you heard you know, the lungs of the world. We pride ourselves of having at least 30% of Colombia under protected areas. And this is a big message because it means that Colombia, it, it doesn't only breathe nature, but we're convinced that our natural capital is what is going to bring the wealth to all Colombians and it's going to be significant for all the planet. So those, those areas here will always have different uh, attractive figures for people that want to invest in Colombia. You know? Mainly commerce, tourism, of course a lot of agriculture, real estate, and what we're talking about, the services that are, that are happening. Each of those areas is a little bit specializing in different things. For example, in the Amazon and the Orinoquia region is where most of our food is being grown right now. Most of the palm oil that is being grown in Colombia, the palm trees and cultivation is, is happening in those regions, and a lot of investment is going to those areas as well. Again, we pride ourselves, like Peru, you know, uh, our fellow Peruvian and neighbors, to be a mega diverse country. Malaysia is also a mega diverse country. Indonesia is also a mega diverse country. And that is uh, the wealth of the future. You know? 
So I don't like to say the future, I want to see that is the wealth of the present and no longer of the future. But that is also helping us become leaders in the world against climate change, against the decarbonization, which is also a big trend for all of our industries. So Colombia is leading the way in those senses as well. Thank you. Next one. Just a little figures. I know that everybody loves figures in their presentations. No? Uh, of course, we needed to put a little bit of those figures up here. How the investment from Asia and Colombia has been growing recently. No? Of course, China is a bigger investor. Japan is also a big investor. But we have now seen other countries trying to invest in Colombia. We don't have the updated figures here for Malaysia, but I'm going to tell you a short story about that, uh, mentioning some of the things that are happening. The first one is the Abadul support in Buenaventura. It's a joint venture between Colombians, Singaporean enterprises, and enterprises for the Philippines to make our Pacific port more uh, available for export. You know? So it requires some infrastructure investments that are happening now in the Pacific coast of Colombia. The second one down here, Agroid, is part of a huge uh, company that is based here in uh, Malaysia, it's called Ovid. And Ovid is a big pond producer, but it's also a pharmaceutical company. So Ovid decided to go to Colombia and do some investments in bananas, you know, in a huge banana farm in northern Colombia, but also investing in southern Colombia in uh, the growth of palm oil and palm trees you know, and palm oil production. They currently have 10,000 hectares and 5,000 under production and they're willing to develop that even more. And there's another story here that I wanted to tell you but it's, I, I didn't put it up there and it's about a small Colombian group, it's called the Alcance Group. So these are investments from Southeast Asia to Colombia. But Alcance came to uh, Malaysia and started doing business in a very curious way. It's an agrochemical company that is based in Medellin, Colombia. And they were trying to develop a detergent, you know, some type of soap for industrial applications. And they had some problem that the soap was not making enough foam. You know, and you, when we're talking about the soaps, everybody lo loves their soap to create a lot of foam. So they had this technical problem. And they found that one of the derivatives from biodiesel is a chemical methyl ester sulfonate. I'm not a chemist, so I don't know how that looks in a, you know, the, the, the graph looks for the, the composition. But this is a biodegradable uh, product that comes from extracting oil. You know, when, when the biodiesel is made, this is a subproduct. So what happens is that they try this MEC, MES, how they call it, and it does create a lot of foam. But they didn't have enough resources or enough production of this type of material to put into their formulas of their detergents. So the person that owns this company came to Malaysia because he knew that somebody in Malaysia was producing this. It's a big company called KLK, which is one of the biggest companies in Malaysia for uh, oil and palm cultivation. And they had this, this ingredient. So he came here and says, I need your ingredient to be in our formulas in Colombia. And he kept knocking the door for almost five years, you know, until somebody said, okay, this Colombian is type of, he's an insistent guy, you know, he does, he's not giving up. And they, they invite him, he told him the whole story about his detergent factory, and then they decided to start selling the MES to this company, you know. That was almost five years ago. Now K, KLK is investing in this company, and they're building a hub to distribute this type of materials in the southern part of the South Pacific part of Colombia. So this is a story about success, about a person in Colombia that found the problem, solved it with the help of the Malaysians, and now they're thinking that their business is going to be worth at least $60 million in the next five years. So that's just, just an example of things that can happen in, in our country and with the people that we have. Next, please. Of course, like all of uh, my colleagues, we are food producing countries, no? So, the thing that you know most about Colombia, of course, is coffee, you know? The regular coffee, the green beans that have been sold all around the planet. We're the fourth producer of coffee in the world, but we're the first producer in specialty coffees. This means that our coffees that come from a sustainable origin, that are grown by the small communities, the small farmers, so the benefits are shared with a lot of people when, once you invest in specialty coffees, and of course, the quality, you know? Most of the 
If somebody here is into coffee, you know that quality is graded by the score of the cup. That's why they call it, you know? So most of the specialty coffees in Colombia, you have to score above 88 points to get a specialty coffee. This is one of the markets that is more promising for Colombia and that most of our coffee producers are aiming to grow this market pretty much. You know? So very interesting, we have you know, a little bit of an advertisement. We have a little coffee shop here by a Colombian and a Venezuelan woman who bring those specialty coffees to Malaysia and to Kuala Lumpur and you can always go there and have like a taste of those great coffees, no? Miss Coco, no? Hey, one. Is the name? Miss Coco. So you're all invited to Miss Coco one of these days. The other thing that we're doing really well is also with specialty cacao, no? Cacao is also uh, one of those commodities that has been sold through around the planet with a specific quality, no? What we call the, the Tahiti cacaos or the normal cacaos. But now, after a few years, countries like Ecuador, Peru, Colombia, Mexico, we're looking into exporting high quality cacao, which we call the aromatic cacao or criollo cacaos. And this is another market that is really growing. A very important and interesting thing about cacao is that the prices of cacao are not so susceptible to change. So this has made the cacao investment very, you know, very fancy for importers in the cacao industry. You know? There's a lot of, also a lot of investment to make those cacaos more sustainable and in, in integrate the farmers into the cacao supply chains. Colombia is also the first importer, uh, the first exporter of flowers. You know? In reality, it's Holland, no? it's the Netherlands, the first exporter or the first trader in flowers in the world. But it's because they receive flowers from all around the world and then they export them. But the, the country that produces most flowers is Colombia. Sadly, we don't have that much presence in Malaysia or in uh, Southeast Asia with our flowers. But it's something that, of course, we want to change. You will find almost 1,600 different varieties of flowers that have been grown in Colombia. And this is because we have all those different types of climates that allow the Colombian producers to produce flowers from roses to what we call the fillers, which is what comes into the bouquets when you receive like a big flower arrangement in your house. There are things that are not flowers in there, but are, it's just the green, the fillers, you know, it's produced in many of our sites. Bananas, we do a lot of exportation of bananas, and now we're growing a lot in fruit exportations. Now we have a large variety of fruits, and with all those trends, you know, following our friends from Mexico and Chile, we're also into the avocado or the palta exporting business, which is growing uh, hugely in, uh, in Asia and in Europe. So those are just a little bit of, of our things that we're exporting in the agribusiness. And of course, palm oil, as I was mentioning, we're the fourth producer now of palm oil in, in the world. And the important thing here for palm is that Colombia has at least 5 million hectares that are available for palm oil development. We have only developed 600,000 of those, but our productivity, the average of the productivity of each hectare of palm oil in Colombia, is above the world average. I received a message from a palm oil producer, and they have uh, almost gotten to 27 tons of oil fruit produced in one single hectare. No? The world average is around 17, so it's almost 10, uh, 10 tons more than the world average in many of those farms. Yes, next one, please. A little bit of energy, no? you know that this is a huge trend, the renewable energies. Colombia is one of the, the uh, world's most important producers in hydroelectric, uh, hydroelectric, hydrologic, how do you say this? Hydropower, hydro? Hydro something, hydropower? Okay, so this is because we have plenty of rain, no? You guys think it's raining here in Kuala Lumpur lately? We have some areas in Colombia that they receive above 13 meters of rain a year. So this is, this is a very rainy country, and sometimes we complain, but it's also a blessing, you know, for agriculture and also for hydrological power production. The other important thing here in this slide is that we have 60% more average sunlight than most of the countries in the world. This is very important for solar energy that is becoming a huge trend around the planet. And it's very small, the, the kind of investment we have today in solar power. So there's a huge opportunity there in Colombia. We already export our energy to Panama 
Ecuador, Peru, and even as far away as Bolivia with our interconnectedness with the different other countries. So this is a big effort that the Colombian governments have made throughout the years. A little bit of what I like the most, tourism, you know? And I guess most of you guys love to do a lot of tourism. We are now entering an area where tourism is going to be big in Colombia. Our president has changed a little bit the incentives for the tourism industry, and he hopes that we receive more interest, more tourists than ever. Just the last year, we almost reached six million tourists, people that stay actually to spend money, not that just only go by the airport and you know stay there six hours in the airport and try to connect to another flight, but actually stay there and spend money in Colombia. But we are still short on infrastructure for tourism. And that is also a great opportunity for Colombians. As you saw, those many regions have many different attractiveness. You know? Attractive things that you can see in the Caribbean, of course, beautiful Caribbean beaches on the Pacific, the wild uh, animals that we can see, like the, the whales that always transit throughout Colombia. And of course, the Amazon and the Andes have many different things to share. Something that I really like is about bird watching. You know? Bird watching has become a big uh, tourist activity especially Colombia, we now, I was looking this morning, 1,968 species of uh, birds in Colombia that have been listed. Many of them only you can see in Colombia, what we call endemic species. So bird watchers are pretty curious people and what they do is that they want to make a big list of birds. And that's their whole thing, you know? So that's something very interesting for us. Yes, next please. Of course, the industrial, the industrial based knowledge, no, it's growing a lot. Uh, we have hubs, especially in Medellin and in Bogota, to develop a lot of software. Many companies have found that it's very, it's a good investment to invest in Colombian uh, IT professionals. Now, they're not as expensive as having an IT professional in Europe, Canada, the US. So, there's a lot of developing of those hubs in Colombia. Their money can go a long way, you know. And there has been some examples from some Indian firms that are now starting to develop a lot of software in Colombia with a great success. So that is something very important. Another thing that I would show from this, this slide is the fintech world is, is growing a lot in Colombia. Because one of our aims is to develop the, our rural areas. Many of the rural people that grow all this food, they don't have access to banks and the fintechs have become a very specific way to bring those uh, uh, low invest loans to people in the rural areas. And there's a lot of opportunity there. And we have uh, grown in the fintech aspect in a very important way. The other thing that I like from here is the audiovisual uh, incentives that uh, are present in Colombia. There's a tax exemption for almost 30% of the money that you bring into Colombia to do, for example, the soap operas, to run movies, to run series, and that has called a lot of the big studios from the US and Europe to start opening those areas in Colombia. Some of the examples, you know, I haven't seen that movie, Memoria, but I have seen Gemini, Gemini Man with Will Smith, and that was filmed in Cartagena. And of course, the place is beautiful, but the big thing when you ask the producers of those type of movies is like, the tax break really makes it worth it to come and film in Colombia. So that has been something very interesting for the Colombian uh, cultural industries, as, as we call it. Next, please. A little bit of some of the other opportunities that we have. You know, a, a lot of things that are related with manufacturing, of course, uh, native pharmaceuticals. Because we have the Amazon and the Chocó region, which are the the places that have the highest biodiversity in the planet of plants and the indigenous knowledge, as the video was mentioning, that when we were, they were showing the indigenous people, we have over 67 uh, indigenous communities that are recognized in Colombia. They have a specific indigenous knowledge on how to use the plants of our, of our country for certain you know, calamities or certain sicknesses that people have. There's a lot of research going into that, and a few firms in Colombia are now specializing on creating pharmaceuticals based on the biodiversity of the Amazon and the jungle. Another thing, sadly, Colombia has been in a conflict for many years, 
but uh, there, there's no bad that comes with something good. You know? I don't know how you say this in, in English very well, but uh, this situation made the Colombians very creative in the defense industry. And now Colombia is the major uh, place where armored vehicles get their, their armored gets done. We even export to the sheikhs in the Middle East all their fleet for armoring their vehicles. It goes to Colombia, it gets armored, and then it, sends, it gets sent back to the countries of origin. And in the Navy, they have grown a special site for armoring vessels that do the control of like the Coast Guard type of work, you know, in the coastal areas. So there's a lot of interest from European countries, our fellow uh, South American and Central American countries to send some of their ships there to be armored so they can do what they call the maritime interdiction. So that is patrolling basically their oceans and their rivers. So that's another opportunity. And one of the other opportunities that I see in countries like uh, Malaysia is of course the gems. You know? I have that big emerald picture up there. Colombia is the biggest producer of emeralds and the finest quality of emeralds in the planet. And sometimes this gets a little overlooked. You know? For markets like the Malaysian market, where people are willing to do some spending in luxury goods, this could be a, a good opportunity. You know? So emeralds, uh, keep, keep them always in mind. Uh, and if you want to do a good gift for your wife, that, that will make it. You know? that, will, that will give you some points in the, in the, at home. Okay? What else do we have? I think we have only, yeah, this is our last one. And this is a very important slide, probably the most important slide of all. It's not only the diversity of people that makes Colombia a great country, but because we have lived uh, under so many troubled circumstances throughout the years, Colombians, I think, the most important thing that we have is that we are very resilient people. We are very innovative. We like to do things because we have lived in such harsh environment, in a harsh uh, social situation, that, and people never give up. Colombia keeps growing in spite of many different things happening in our planet. So when you go and do business with Colombia, you're going to find not only resilient people, highly professional people, very innovative, and people that are willing to receive you the best they can so you can feel like at home and that you can have the security that they're going to get things done. So our biggest asset you know, as in all uh, Latin America is the Latinos. You know? We do things in a, with, always with a good spirit. We want to do things good. We, gotta, we want to get things done. And we always want to have like a smile on our faces and do our work how it's supposed to be done. So thank you very much, and we are at your service at the embassy. First, I would like to express my gratitude for uh, Too Easy for inviting to do this event. After the video, I would like to talk about the business opportunity in Cuba. Next, please. Cuba at this to stimulate the participation of the foreign cap capital and small and major enterprises from the private sector in the economic de development of the nation. Next. In the case of foreign investment, the priorities are the following in food production, diversification of exports, access to external financing, and access to advanced technology. In the video, the Marian Economic Zone is one to raise our due attention as a simple fact. Marian is a poor cap capable of receiving new Panama vessels, probably the only in the area. Besides, it was created as a special development of for foreign investment. Please, uh, next. The poor is operated by Singapore Port Authority. For example, this can make around 80,000 containers in one year. Present raising transformation in the legal regulation for FDIR. Possibility of association with the new private sector, private sector. Foreign ownership allowed in our foreign investment sector 
set mine and the public service. ASIC of the foreign financial transaction for all enterprises. Now you can see the only portfolio of investment opportunity. It's a regularly updated and the fully accessible in five languages. Next. Some of the inputs of the project are the, for example, tourism, food sector, pharmaceutical sector, sector, and petroleum sector. We also have an export portfolio. It has three main areas, biopharmaceutical, tourists, and, and agri-industry. Next. <coughs> has mentioned before on one fundamental sector, or is biopharmaceutical. About this list, the most important thing to mention is that our of it is one hundred percent human intellectual project. In panel five, this afternoon, we will talk more details about this. Next. All important exportable sectors of our portfolio are tourism, cultural service, sports service, next. And industrial sector, next. The educational sector. Next. Thank you very much. Thank you so much to the organizers for having us here uh, to disclose this important information and valuable uh, for all of you. Uh, and thank you to the MC for the, this uh, energetic uh, and dynamic uh, presentation of all of us. Thank you so much. And uh, let's uh, start to have uh, this presentation. Uh, well, as you know, Mexico has a privileged geographic location. It, say, it shares a borderline of more than 3,000 kilometers with the biggest market in the world. It, it is located between the Atlantic and Pacific uh, Oceans, uh, two of the main international trade hubs in the world, and it is in the center of the North-South Corridor in the Americas. The distance between Mexico and the main logistics hubs of Europe, Asia, North and South America place, next places Mexico in an in a, in a ideal, ideal position of international scenes. Uh, it represents a strategic options to reduce the distance in the relation to the continuity of supply chains and trade differences between countries. Mexico is the third country with most airports worldwide. 76, 64 international, and 12 national. Mexico ranks first in Latin America in the OECD ECD's ranking of main freight and passenger land transport indicators. Next one. Um, well, let me talk about the healthy finances and microeconomic stability. Mexico has enjoyed uh, the financial and economic stability in recent years, thanks to the combination of sound fiscal policies, economic reforms, and the, di the diversification of the economic base. Some of them are, for example, inflation control. Despite global uncertainty, the Mexican government has been successful in controlling, controlling inflation, with an annual rate that has remained below 7% uh, to the April 2023, but today, by the way, the Central Bank of Mexico has disclosed a figure of 4.4% in annual base for the inflation. Uh, the foreign exchange reserves, Mexico foreign exchange reserves have been increasing, reaching around 203 billion US dollar in 2022, but the, today, by, by the way, the central bank has uh, disclosed the uh, figure of 213 billion USD in Mexican in, in reserves of the Bank of Mexico, which works as a buffer to protect the country's uh, financial system and ensure stability in times of economic turbulence. 
Fiscal discipline. Mexico in recent years has established a disciplined fiscal policy with a public budget deficit that has remained below 3% of GDP. Uh, the Mexican peso has had a behavior that position, position this as a, one of the most appreciated con currencies in the world. Diversify economy. Diversify economy. Mexico's economy is diversified in several sectors from manufacturing services and even natural resources, which reduces its vulnerability to external shocks. Next one, please. Uh, well, as you know, we, Mexico has an extensive commercial network of international agreements and treaties. Mexico is one of the countries with the more extensive commercial network, particularly in free trades. Uh, UNCNCA of the renovated NAFTA allowed Mexico to export more than half trillion of dollars to the United States and Canada. Mexico is now the main trade partner of the United States. China is the second one. Mexico is also, is also partner of the CPTPP, commercial agreement that also Malaysia has ratified. And we are ready to start uh, to increment of trade and investment with local partners. Mexico is also part of the commercial agreement with the European <coughs> Union. Um, and years 2023 and 2024 are used to update the terms of these trade agreements with the European Union. Uh, next, please. Um, talk about the, uh, that Mexico is leader, leader in attracting foreign indirect investments. During 2022, FDI acquisition in Mexico increased by 12 compared to 2021 and reached its highest figure in seven years with a total of 35 billion uh, US, US dollar. In fact, in 2023, Mexico FDI recorded more than 36 billion USD in FDI. Mexico ranked as the eighth economy that attracts the most FDI. In the same year, gross fixed investment as a percentage of GDP in Mexico was the fifth worldwide and the second highest in Latin America and the Caribbean with 20.3%. Of the, of the FDI capture, 48 corresponds to new investment and 45 to reinvestment in profits. Next one, please. Well, let's see the incentives to uh, uh, attract investments. Sorry, I have a little bit of problem with this. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, the, 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 these are some of the incentives that Mexico has related to attract foreign investments. So several customs and tax returns, also free zones are involved the northern and southern board, uh, borders, uh, that uh, is a kind of uh, uh, to attract investment from all over the world, uh, as we, uh, as I said, I said, said. Next one, please. Export power. Well, let's see the export power. Uh, um, uh, it is a manufacturing hub, Mexico, not only for the U.S., but also for companies around the world. The recent 3.9 increase in the country's industrial activity can be mainly attributed to the advanced manufacturing sector, which offers superior and profitable capaci capabilities in many, in many sectors. Manufacturing capabilities have evolved considerably since the signing of SEMCA, the new NAFTA, Mexico now has a qualified workforce as well as top-level capabilities with extensive experience, especially in the automotive sector, aerospace, pharmaceutical, and medical devices industries, which to date are also highly successful industries. As you know, there are so many, for example, automakers from Europe, from the United States, from China. Now, in the recent years, uh, we have a huge 
investment from China in the auto automakers and auto parts because they, they see uh, Mexico as a platform to export and re-export uh, the auto parts and part of the, uh, the automobile industry to United States and Canada. Uh, the next one, please. Well, these uh, are uh, some of the uh, sectors with business opportunities, uh, as you can see. The digital commerce, aerospace, energy, energy, for example, in the case of Malaysia, we have uh, Petronas and Sapura Energy working in Mexico, drilling uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, medical devices, electrical and electronic components that, of course, uh, Malaysia also have these uh, sectors uh, working with Mexico. And automotive and spare parts, as I said. Next one, please. Let's see the domestic market. In terms of infrastructure development projects, Mexico is investing huge to reduce operating costs and increase logistic efficiency. Here's some of the projects along Mexico territory. And I will talk in the following slides of some of them, but as you can see, uh, Mexico have uh, many uh, infrastructure projects along the, the, the territory. And uh, for example, uh, the next, the next uh, slide, please, is the next slide. Interoceanic corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. The Interoceanic Corridor of Tehuantepec, which potential investment of 100 billion pesos, is almost 6 billion USD. The project seeks to develop the southern part of Mexico through an Interoceanic Corridor from Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific Ocean. We know that uh, at these uh, current times, uh, Panama uh, Canal has uh, a little bit problems with the flow of uh, water. And uh, well, this, this project has long time, uh, many years that was uh, explored to do, but only in the recent years Mexico has uh, 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 places uh, too much in, uh, investment to develop this, uh, this part of the very uh, uh, southern part of Mexico to have a corridor with uh, rails and uh, um, a, um, a, uh, parts of the uh, of this uh, Mexico part to uh, try to uh, connect the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific Ocean in order to have a, a corridor to, to transport from the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific Ocean and on the contrary. Next one, please. The Sonora Plan, well, let's see the Sonora Plan. The Sonora Plan uh, has an estimated investment of 48 billion US, USD in the long term. And these are the main factors of the investment project to develop clean energy, both for in Mexico and United States. As you can see, it is, it is in the north part of Mexico in the border with United States. And it's a photovoltaic project, as you can see there to uh, uh, have a photovoltaic uh, connection, not, not only to Mexico, with the northern of Mexico, but to sell energy to the southern part of the United States. Next, please. Uh, the Mayan train, well, you perhaps have, to, have uh, heard about the Mayan train. The Mayan train is uh, a project that will strengthen the territorial planning of the region and enhance its, in, its industry, in its uh, tourism industry. And uh, it will generate economic benefits and increase connectivity in the Yucatan Peninsula that is also in the southern part of Mexico. Uh, this, uh, allows cargo and passengers to be moved efficiently 
And this uh, historic milestone that we marked the beginning of our new era and the region's connectivity. And next one, please. Uh, the Prospective Atlas. Well, this is uh, the Prospective Atlas. Uh, as yesterday was, was commented, the Pacific Alliance is a group. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let's see this. And I, have, I think I have. Um, a miss slides. Exactly. Sorry, but exactly. Sorry, but uh, there are some uh, miss uh, slides. Let's talk about the Pacific Alliance. Uh, as yesterday was commented, the Pacific Alliance is a group of Latin American countries to encourage not only business, free trade, and finance services among them, but it's also the main window to promote businesses in, and investment with Asia-Pacific region. As yesterday was uh, talked, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, and, uh, and Chile uh, are part of the Pacific Alliance, but all, all the, uh, these uh, countries that you can see are part uh, observers the main part in Singapore is now part of the uh, Pacific Alliance. To uh, increase the commerce with uh, Asia Pacific uh, countries and uh, Southeast Asia countries. Uh, this group of four countries has uh, increased their trade, the final services, even the people can uh, move from these to, uh, four countries in, in, in with uh, no visa, can go from Chile to Mexico, or to Colombia to Peru, Peru, Chile, in order to increase the investments, the, uh, the labor, and the financial services among them. The next one, please. Uh, the Asia Pacific Alliance War Plan was uh, stipulated in 2021-2025, and as you can see, there are meetings Asia Pacific Alliance to promote and strengthen the bilateral links among the, the these uh, four uh, uh, Latin American countries. And the next one, please. Exactly. Let's see the trade balance between Mexico and Asia. All the countries, as you can see. Mexico has a deficit with them. Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, all of them, Mexico has a deficit. That's why uh, Mexico recorded a trade deficit of 36 billion USD with Asian countries in 2023, primarily due to import inputs, parts, and components for final goods production. Due to these numbers, Mexico is determined to increase business and investment on both sides. Uh, as you can see, Mexico has, uh, has this trade deficit with all Asian countries. How Mexico can afford this? Because it has a huge surplus with our North American partners, United States and Canada, thanks to the USCMCA. Um, recent figures said that uh, Mexico has, uh, last year, 2023, a surplus with United States of 150 billion US dollars in the trade in between Mexico and United States. That's why we can afford this kind of uh, deficit with all the, the countries in the Asian. Next one, please. Okay, let's see the perspective atlas. I'm so sorry for this uh, combination of slides. Slides. Well, uh, the results, the results of this exercise. We have uh, five strategic sectors and, and five sectorial corridors that have the territories and industrial conditions to receive investments. 
First one, the sector for the manufacturing in wind turbines. Specifically, the wind turbine tower construction industry, which includes the production of steel, cable, and paint. Second one, the pharmaceutical sector, specifically strengthening uh, pharmaceutical preparations that correspond the, to anti and modified immunological products. Three, the aerospace sector, specifically vehicles and light parts, as I said previously. The agricultural sector, particularly the chocolate and vanilla industries, considered the culture production. And the number five is petrochemical sector, specifically in relation to the chemical industry and the interrelationships with the four previous sectors. And the next one is, uh, thank you, and we are going to, and we are, and we are going to, to, to watch a short video. Success. In Mexico, we love this word and we love to share it with you. Take a closer look at Mexico. Take a closer look and invest for success. Mexico aims to become the best destination for foreign investment. Investment to make your business grow. We are an attractive market. Mexico is one of the most important economies. We have trade agreements with 46 countries thanks to our privileged access. We make importing and exporting easy with our open ports on the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans and the Gulf of Mexico. Access for growth is available 24-7 to everyone all over the world. Either by air, land or sea, Mexico welcomes you with 64 international airports, 63 border crossings, 68 high sea ports in cabotage, 27,000 railroad tracks, and 372,000 kilometers of roadways. We are connected everywhere, all the time. We are young, with 118 million consumers and an average population of 26 years old. Mexico is a young country. By 2035, the working population will increase by 26.4%. Let's get things done. We are the leading export country in Latin America with 67% of advanced manufacturing. Six out of 10 developers with PSP certification around the world are Mexicans. Mexico is first place in patents granted. World's leading exporter of flat screen TVs world's leading exporter of two-door refrigerators, world's leading producer of organic coffee, world's leading exporter of papaya and avocado, world's largest silver producer, third largest exporter of IT services, fourth largest exporter of auto parts globally, fourth best location for software development, fifth largest exporter of computers, 10th largest exporter of cell phones, 6th largest exporter of global aerospace export to the USA, 7th largest producer of cars, and 4th largest exporter of cars, largest exporter of medical devices in Latin America. Investing in Mexico means walking towards innovation, a path towards a successful business experience a window to new ways of connecting with the world, today and tomorrow. We are a collaborative community, hard-working and skilled people. We are a friendly country to all nations. The opportunities are endless. Invest in ideas. Invest in possibilities. Invest in success. Invest in Mexico.
Thank you so much. Come on, everybody.